All right, so we're not happy with this machine, so here's what I did. So on some of these, you can pull this stuff back. It's kind of rubbery, and they have actually uh, soldered these two wires here because the leads are only so long. And so what I've done is I've got my my 22 at 50 volts, and I'm going to put it in here. So um, I'll solder that one first, and then uh, I'll get most of the heat shrink to go over it. Um, and then um, if I have to, uh, I'll uh, heat shrink the whole thing with a bigger piece and uh, just kind of cover it up. So uh, I'll go into here. I'll clip this one about that short, too, after I kind of pull the rubber back. So uh, let me go ahead and film that for you, just kind of give you an idea what this looks like, and then you can uh, you know, figure it out on your particular machine. But this is a liner, and it's not running fast enough, so you pull the 47 out, and it actually has a polarized one in there. Um, I don't have any uh, bipolar trans uh, transistors, bipolar, or otherwise known as non-polarized capacitors on hand. So, anyway... So basically, um, this is, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm using, you can see it behind there, the, uh, the weller. It's much easier to use something like this than it is to try and do this with a, um, soldering gun. What we do usually... If I have one of those little things called the helping hand, I'll put that on there, but um, just get a little bit of solder on there first. I gotta be careful because if we get it too hot, it'll fall off right there immediately. And then there's actually a little bit of flux on here. So I'm gonna rotate this over here because I'm left-handed and then um, And all you need to do is just barely overlap it. Okay. Let's see where we're at. I just does not want to focus. So that's all you're going to do. You're just going to overlap it. And then you'll pull your insulation back over it. You just set this back down. I put my soldering thing up. Yeah. See that? This thing does not want to focus. Okay, so then we should do the same thing for the other side. So hopefully you guys can see this. I'll pull it pull it back. And you gotta be careful when you do this, you don't want to break your coil wires or anything. And I clip these because you never know. You might need to use one later. Um, this one here. But they don't use heat shrink on these. They use some sort of rubber. And what I've actually just done just now is I stretched the rubber and I cut a little piece off. And that way I can pull it down and I have a little bit of sticking out there. Okay, and this is solder flux. I just want to get a little bit on there, and then what I'll do, I have a little piece of solder right here. So you make sure that it's kind of tinned before you go and try and stick them together. And um, it makes it a little bit easier. So, just kind of, let me put that up. Set it to where, what I like to do is, Try and pull the rubber back and then bend the wire like this. 
because then it holds the rubber out of your way. And then you can join the two together with solder and then you straighten the wire out. It should stick together. See that? Oop, we drip some flux on the coil. So once I straighten this out. I can pull my wire. Now, um, I have uh, some larger stuff that will fit over this. So, good old Harbor Freight, I've had this crap forever. So I can put it over that and that if I want to. Um, depends on how you want to do it and what sizes you have. So um, right here, that one's not quite long enough. So what I want to do is I'm going to put this over here. It's a little bit too long. Um, I'm going to put it over here and shrink it because I'd rather not cover the capacitor because the thing is if somebody else ends up with this machine then they would have to uncover the capacitor to see what size it is it's just my preference to usually try and do that um, I should probably use a heat gun, but it's a lot of work. So this big stuff does shrink down pretty small. So now, we go in here. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing because I think I had it off of the camera. So, but, we have heat shrink in there. And uh, let me zoom out. And a second here. Um, we're going to go and run the machine. We just got to get this back together over here. So it's not too terribly difficult. I mean, if you've never done anything like this, maybe it might be for a lot of people. Um, but, so what I want to do is make sure I've got this thing in here to where it's not going to touch anything it's not supposed to. I'm not shoving it up underneath the coils like it is right now. So what I do is I take something like this, because right now, this thing is too long and it was going down in here like that so um, put it in there try and make it look as nice as possible And you tighten the back piece. It's going to be not that one. Okay. Should be good. going over here when you have them like this you need to make sure you got your polarity correct also because 
These are polarized capacitors. So this is how you'd normally have it for these. Man, the mess of the wires around here. Get this thing pushed through here. So I got another one of these machines coming in the mail today. I ordered them when they were six dollars. They're back up to fifteen bucks each. Okay, so we're at seven volts. And I think our uh, last speed without a needle loaded on here was like 117 and 107 with one. So we're about 110 and a 52% duty cycle. Let's see what our gap looks like. I want lots of throw on this thing. So I'm not necessarily going to be able to get the speed that I want. That's why I changed the capacitor. I like to be able to hang out the needle and I want to watch it as I line. So 110. Yeah, it's, it's not going to be too great, but it's not going to be too bad. And it should be better than what I did have on there. So we get this little piece right here. And we're basically ready to try it out, so let's see what happens. So, we could just put like a line. Let's see. We'll do. like a little face there and see what it looks like on this thing. Uh, where's that rubbing alcohol? Now you gotta remember this tattoo skin is really pain in the butt. So it's not really lining the way I want it to still but we're a little bit closer, so. So you could do some like line sculpting with this, but it's not, uh, as far as this stuff goes, it ain't no one pass liner. Um, let's try on the other side, we're just kind of doing a duel here. My problem is I have really fast hand speed, so when I have a slow liner, it's not good for me. So that came out, you know, kind of the way I intended it. You know, it's a face. I don't want like a really, like, you know, bold line. So, it was, it's working. Um... I still need to figure out how to get it a little bit faster, but it's working.